Man, I got I gotta say, I am curious to see someone attempt the Mafia race without the time stop hat. Let's see. Ah, yep. Found a video. So I will just uh, let this play out whilst I... Hang on a minute. Alright, I saw a connection hiccup for just a moment, but it looks like it was only momentary. This is the actual intro of Paper Mario. Yeah, it's... It's, uh, you can uh, barely distinguish it from the Hat and Time mod, right? Oh, by the way, Vine Sauce just added a video, uh, like, a highlight video from when he streamed the, like, deliberate bad translation hack of this game called Book of Mario Thousands of Doors. I think they just retranslated the entire script between five completely different languages and ended up with some really funny stuff. Most of it just garbled nonsense. But it's worth checking out on the main Vine Sauce channel if you're into that sort of thing. So yeah, whilst uh, I get started with... Yeah, let's just start with the Pit of 100 Trials. And while that's going on, I will show you this... Uh, little Mafia Town thing that someone managed to pull off. Did you know featuring She Says? Eh... Uh, it's not boundary break. Yeah, I'll just uh, tuck this away in the corner whilst I get started. Uploaded by Enea, E N N E A. So let's see how they do it. Hold on a minute, what hat is that? <laughs> What in the world hat is that? It looks extremely fancy. Looks like some kind of headset. Okay. That, that's a little bit loud. Let me turn that down a bit. Alright, so they scoot around. Go around the edge of the beach rather than on top. Land right in the cannon, that's an important part, I suppose. Cross through the portal to the unknown. And just scoot the rest of the way? Is that all there is to it? Wow. Is that the hat you get in Murder on the Owl Express? I don't think so. Alright, no autoplay, please. Well, uh, that was fast. I thought that would have lasted a bit longer with, like, an explanation or something, but, uh... Oh, doggone it. Not only do we have to go back to the 50th floor of the pit, we also have to backtrack to Far Outpost once more. Oh, but hey, before I forget, uh, we need to check in here real quick and see what was in the, uh, the secret treasure box. Do you know what was in that treasure chest we found in the palace? It contained... a dried mushroom! Oh no, it's nothing to be disappointed by. Now we know for certain that people indeed ate mushrooms 1,000 years ago. This is a groundbreaking anthropological discovery. And he doesn't even give it to you. <laughs> That's fine, I would have thrown it in the trash if I had <laughs> received it. Let's try and get this done quick. Awesome games done quick. Super Paper Mario. Also, I never once uh, titled my stream. Sorry about that. Uh, psh. Yeah, it's just been completely uncategorized this entire time. I mean, I don't know if this really matters at this point, but may as well be thorough, I suppose. Says the mushroom. <laughs> like, wow, people ate us a thousand years ago. How wondrous. 
I suppose they are at that. It's not something that people talk about all that much, but, uh, yeah, a little bit, uh... Goombas are derived from mushrooms in some way, much in the same way that toads are. Except where toads grew bodies, Goombas developed eyebrows. I don't know, best not to think about it too much. There's a lot of stuff related to the original Super Mario Brothers that you shouldn't think too hard about. Like how it says in the instruction manual that uh, the brick blocks that appear all throughout the world are actually toads that were transformed by a curse from Bowser. Yeah. Don't know why they felt the need to include that information. Fucking and dodging. Bobbing and weaving. Alright, who is it we need to talk to? I think he said he was next to a statue. Oh, there you are. Oh, jeez, you're, you're hiding there, aren't you? Yep. If one writes Wish on wall of 50th floor, then Wish comes true. This special big explosion to get down there and write Wish. And then whole thing was hoax. Oh, that's weird. Alright, fine. Now that we have a whole bunch of badge points, it'll be a nice little opportunity for us to experiment with our build and see if we can't pump out the most uh, ideal, the most powerful combination of badges that will just let us wipe the floor with any enemy we come upon. Now we've got, like, spike shield for... oops. I do not want to deal with you guys right now. So something's been trending in the world of uh, meme news. You may have heard about it. Uh, I actually don't remember the name off the top of my head. I want to say it's co something called Project Melody. And having said that out loud, you may already know exactly what it is. Uh, it's uh, similar to the idea of uh, VTubers taking over the role of, you know, regular uh, live streamers. I don't think they are, by the way. And in a similar situation, but much more aggravated, like blown way the fuck out of proportion on Twitter, is this Project Melody appearing on a, like, cam girl hub. And all, all the, uh, all the original live, uh, models are just freaking out, thinking that this quote-unquote cartoon is going to drive them all out of business. It's just, it's just pure jealousy is all. They see the high numbers and they're like, well, fuck, fuck this 3D cartoon nonsense. Get them the fuck out of here. And some of them are really stretching with their complaints. You know, saying things like, oh, this is, this is attracting children to our website. Which is just nonsense because... <laughs> Underage viewers are attracted to pornographic sites regardless of any other context. So I feel like that complaint is just kind of blown out the window. Alright, multi-bounce. Gonna need that. And probably nothing but that. It's just gonna be nothing but power for Mario here. Don't really need defend plus. I'll slap another power... Onto my partner and Mario 2, why not? And what else? I need Spike Shield at some point or another. And you know what? Flower Saver. That might help. Nah, actually, on second thought, let's get Flower Finder. It's a little bit cheaper. So that leaves us two extra that we can put on. 
Uh, no, nah, not tornado jump. That kind of sucks. Chill out, maybe? Simplifier. Yeah, th this will make things a little bit easier on me. Now, who should I bring? Who's good at targeting multiple opponents, should the situation call for it? Uh, Koops. Yeah, Koops might... Well, no. Koops is kind of worthless against... Uh, enemies that are floating, so... Guess I'll bring out Flurry! Don't let them see all the donations VTubers get or they'll go on our- Jesus Christ, that's a lot of damage! Wow! Okay, I think we found the winning formula here. One VTuber, uh, Yuzuki Roa, had someone donate one million yen on her birthday. Wow. Yeah, no matter how you slice that, that's a lot of money. I don't care what the conversion rate is nowadays. Well, anyway, I felt like that was a subject that might pique your interest if you weren't already aware of it. A good counter-argument that I've heard to the, uh, you know, the shitstorm that's unfolding on Twitter is that it's not that the live models are getting stuff, they're not getting money or attention stolen from them. Rather, it's a situation similar to Twitch Plays Pokemon, where an entirely new audience is being drawn in to an existing service. So, you know, the, the original uh, people who were using that platform were still watching whoever the hell they want. It's just that this new, uh, this new channel, this new character that's appeared has just uh, drawn in a lot of curious onlookers who otherwise may not have ever touched this website. So I feel like that's a good way of looking at it. It'd be like if Sony started losing their shit because, uh... You know, what was the name of that indie platform? Uh, the, uh... Oh, jeez. The Umfo? No. Uh... Oh, I can't remember. It didn't last very long, but it wanted to be, like, the... hub for indie developers. And, uh, their core means of distribution. Oh, what was it called? <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, Omfo, I think, is the name of a band. Uh, but yeah, the Ooh, yeah. So, the situation unfolding right now would be like if Sony or Microsoft just started going mental and, like, filing lawsuits and just being really pissy about the whole situation with Ooh, yeah. Assuming that Ooh, yeah experienced any major form of success. You know, they're like, these indie trash bags are taking away our precious customers. Like, no, they're not. They're attracting new ones. It's it's not it's not a direct form of competition. Man, how long ago was the Ouya thing? I remember pe ma people making a pretty big deal about it back in the day, but ultimately it kind of just went nowhere. Oops. Well, maybe that's not entirely fair. It... It sold a little bit. It attracted some indie developers' attention. You know, for all I know, depending on how much they invested into it, it might have technically been a success. I don't know. The stage hazards, so far, are the only things that have been able to hurt me. Boy, I hope I run into some of those movers. Try and speed this along a little bit more.
It's in line to what Jim Sterling said many times. Triple A publishers aren't satisfied with sharing the, the market. They want it all for themselves. Yeah. It's been happening in lots of industries. I was just reflecting the other day about, uh... One of my co-workers was talking about how people in grocery stores nowadays are buying more per trip than ever before. You know, they're making fewer trips, but buying more overall. When previously, I assume, this- whoops! I got lazy there. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, right, stores. Like, one after the other, like, local establishments have either been bought out by, or just completely destroyed by big supermarket chains. So, whereas in the past, someone in America may have been able to just go to a corner store on their way home from work or something, or even just walk there. Like, a lot of people were just in walking range of their favorite stores back then. Not everywhere, of course. But it used to be that some towns would just grow naturally out of a single store. And communities would build around them. And nowadays we just don't have that. People get their needs from one location that they have to go way out of their way to find. Oh no, it's just not, not the future that I had envisioned for this country. Which feels kind of weird to say, because it's the future that I grew up in. But, you know, so sometimes those rambling old folks kind of have a point when they say things used to be better back in my day. Sometimes it's viewed through gross tinted glasses, but sometimes they have a point. We're in a period of unprecedented financial growth all across the country, but most of us aren't really seeing the result of it. Vote Bernie 2020. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it wouldn't be too controversial to just talk about the Democratic nominees for a second, would it? Because it is voting season. I was going to vote earlier this week, but ultimately decided not to, because I was trying to coordinate something with my family on that day, and... <laughs> By the time, uh, all of us were ready to do anything, it just didn't work out. It was rainy, ugly out there, outside, we didn't really feel like going anywhere. We were gonna make a day out of it, like go out to dinner somewhere, and I was... Like, it took so long to get any kind of correspondence going that day that I just ended up cooking for myself. So, you know, not much point in going to dinner immediately after that. So ultimately, we just decided to postpone it until next week. I have talked a few times with, uh current chat member about uh, candidate Andrew Yang, who is sadly no longer running for the presidential uh, primary. That being said, I didn't think he realistically had a chance of winning, because his ideas are just a little bit ahead of their time, if you ask me. But I think there is still some hope for him and his ideas. One of my friends on social media proposed that he uh, join up with a different candidate as their Secretary of Labor if they win. I think that would have a positive effect on uh, labor laws in this country, which just right now aren't all that great. What, what's, what's the ratio? Like... One in ten uh, Americans right now belong to a union of some kind, a labor union. Compared to a figure more like, what is it, like 60% in Sweden or something? 
it's kind of ridiculous. This is something you'll see come up just about every time Jim Sterling uploads something. Like, he himself doesn't say it that often anymore, but in the comment section, there will always be someone that emphasizes, in all caps, UNIONIZE THE GAME INDUSTRY, FOR THE LOVE OF PETE. Buttigieg. <laughs> But yeah, that, 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 that video from uh, this past Monday about workers being stripped of their credit just because they leave the company or whatever. Or because their contract perhaps expired by the time a game gets re-released or something. Like, if a game gets re-released, some companies just decide to strip all names from the credits list except for whoever happens to be in the building on the day of the re-release. It's really, really stupid. Even if you don't become president, you can still have a voice in the government. That's right. That's right. It could be argued that the, uh... You know, the senators and the representatives and the other people in... Quote-unquote lesser seats of power are the ones who really have an influence. And you, you could go as far to say that this past couple of years has not been Donald Trump's presidency... It has been Mitch McConnell's presidency. And the influence of that particular person stretches way back into Obama's first term. Like, that man has fingers in many pies, so to say. Hey, I wonder, is there a, uh, so-called snipping tool available in, uh, OBS, I wonder? There's a little image I want to capture real quick, but I don't know if it's worth the effort. Oh, it doesn't look like it. That might just be a feature of other broadcasting software, like XSplit. That's fine, I can do it this way instead. Okay, it's... <laughs> I wanted to showcase something in the, like, banner artwork for A Hat in Time, but it's not displaying properly, so whatever, who cares. It's the, uh... Uh, loading screen artwork for Deadbird Studio. Like, the first chapter. You know, the one where the hat kid has two pairs of sunglasses on. I can't help but notice the ridiculous difference in size between the conductor and DJ Grooves. Like, so often when I looked at that picture, I thought that the... I thought that DJ Grooves had both uh, of his hands on his cheek. You know, making an, oh my gosh, so cute kind of face or whatever. Turns out only one of those hands belongs to him. The other one is the conductor who's, like, shoving him aside to get a better look. And the conductor is just puny in that picture. I don't know why. He he's just absurdly small. And I know he isn't usually that small in the game, right? <laughs> I don't remember. You don't see DJ Grooves and the Conductor next to each other that often. I'll have to rewatch the opening cutscene for that chapter in order to get a good uh, height comparison. I could very easily make a meme out of this by taking this art and just superimposing the text, you know, six foot zero and five foot eleven over or above their heads. Well, with this ridiculous output of damage I have, this has not been too bad. 
What are we, like, halfway through already? Uh, yeah, just about halfway through with what we need to do. Well, with me getting this out of the way, uh, today, this Hat in Time and Paper Mario cleanup stream, I'm thinking that maybe next week I'll do something a little bit different. You know, take a brief break from the Hat in Time. And do, I don't know, Super Mario Maker. There's a particular level that I've been meaning to finish in Super Mario Maker 2 recently, but I haven't found the time for it. And it's kind of a big project. It's a recreation of Bowser's Castle from uh, Super Mario RPG. The, the second time around. The one with all the, like, puzzle rooms. I have already successfully found a way to make it to where you have six chambers that you can enter, and once you've done four of them, you can move on to the next area without having to finish all of them. Like, that in and of itself is a foundation for a pretty solid level. Problem is, I can't get it to fit. There's a very limited amount of space that you have to work with in Mario Maker, so... I'm thinking I'm going to have to revise the challenge rooms and make them smaller so that I can fit six entire one of them, six whole challenge rooms in one level. In addition to, you know, the rest of the level that comes before and after. There's probably also a bunch of levels that I've made since the last time I live-streamed that game that would be worth showing off. Uh, I made one level that was based off of the giant cake fight in Mario RPG. Probably my favorite thing about making that one was making the kind of timed race that you have to do against the snippets in order to uh, get the best available uh, ending, the best, like, screen, the best, like, Whatever, it's a kiss that you're going after in Mario RPG. And in Mario Maker, the level I made based off of it, you're trying to get items instead. Like, the longer you take, the fewer items will be available. There's like a timer in the ceiling that drops down munchers on top of the question blocks to make sure you don't open them. Everyone's got an item down here. I just thought of something. Did I ever complete the, uh, tattle log? I kind of forgot to check on it. Yep, yeah, I got all of them. From the most basic of Goombas all the way down to the Shadow Queen. And hey, what a what an interesting coincidence that Beldum, Marilyn, and Vivian are all located right before her in the listing. Hmm. Interesting. And don't worry if you miss any of those. If you do, you can drop by Professor Frankly's house in the post-game and pick them out of the trash can. I just remembered, I brought up a subject, like, over an hour ago, when I was playing A Hat in Time, that I completely forgot to return to. I think you mentioned something about a cake or something, and I said that I had something to add on the subject of sweets, and I picked the wrong option. Shoot. But whatever, I have this little buck, this little bin of uh, cookies here. 
And some of you may have already heard of a trick that you can do with uh, stale cookies or otherwise stale foodstuffs. In that you can kind of rehydrate them if you place them in a container with a fresh piece of bread. And I tried that, and it's working wonders, actually. Like, when I bought these cookies, I was real disappointed that they were as dry as they were. They usually turn out pretty good from the place I get them. But there's always the risk that I will get one of the older bashes through no fault of my own. So I tried the little slice of bread technique, and... Oh, what? Mario became a superstar. Next battle, Mario's crowd and stage get even bigger. What? I didn't know that it could get bigger than this. Oh. Well, that's new. I guess I hadn't 100%ed the game after all. Ah. Oh yeah, there it is! I could do it with a crowd of something other than x knots But, uh, yeah, this is cool. Uh, unfortunately, that... For the first time, I have completely failed to dispatch the entire enemy team. So I'll just do it this way. How am I going to get past this? I think I'm about out of options to increase my power. Hey, but I do have uh, some extra uh, badge points, though, for what it's worth. I could put this on. You know what I need? I need to, like, go to the Pianta Parlor and buy more multi-bounce badges. If you equip more than one, it costs more FP to use it. But it'll do a bit more damage as well. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything I can do to further boost my power. It's alright, though. In situations like this, I just have no idea. I suppose if I'm feeling gutsy, I could just drop myself down to 5 HP and see how that works out. Alright, I just kind of feel like ending this right now. The sooner we get through this particular set of levels, the better. Oh man, that one kind of threw me for a loop. Oh, concluding my topic on the cookies. Uh, some of them have actually become so soft after doing this, that they're, like, falling apart in my hand. I can't even pick them up. That's how effective it is. So yeah, give it a try at home, if you feel like it. While I'm on this subject, I may as well mention that my favorite kind of cookie is peanut butter. That's the one that I always end up coming back to. Sure, every now and again I might end up with a craving for, like, the kind of cookies that have cream in the center or whatever, but, uh... Good old, uh... What floor are we on? Good old peanut butter cookies. Like, they're so simple that I could make them myself. And when they're fresh, they are just the best. Okay, I don't know how I messed that one up. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hang on a minute, did I take damage from that? Oh, that's interesting. I kind of feel like uh, fighting another one of those things so I can figure out for sure. I thought I saw a one show up, but then I lost three flower points. And the fuzzy recovered three flower points, so was that one... I, did I take damage from an attack that normally does not inflict damage because I have the defense down badge? I have to find out. Uh, I should have gone with multi-bounce. You know what, this is fine. I'll just do this. For some reason, the action command for this attack seems to be getting easier. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm at such a high level? But yeah, I could just keep the button held down at this point and it would just charge up automatically. Because it's filling up so goddamn fast. Another snack I have with me today is, uh, planters. Uh, those little, like, cheese puff balls. And honestly, I kind of didn't want to get them. I just had a craving for them. Main reason I don't feel like uh, supporting planters right now is because of that really, really awful thing they're trying to do on social media. Promoting something called a... What level are you on? You look familiar. Didn't I have the same person in the chat like a couple of weeks ago asking me the same question? Uh, I think I'm almost at level 40. Holy... Wow, what? Okay, we got fire jets to deal with now. Uh, incidentally, I have actually completed the game. This is just a minor little uh, post-game session. Because there is a quest that pops up after you beat the game that asks you to go to the 50th floor of the pit. So that's what I'm trying to do. This won't be a very long live stream, so as soon as I get that done, we'll move on to the other side quests, and then we'll buy... No, I've already bought Luigi's final book, I just need to read it. So this is this is the majority of what I'm doing with Paper Mario today. Hashtag remaster Thousand Year Door, by the way. That was a nice little thing that I saw from uh, Vinny's stream of the weird translated version of this game. What was it called? Book of Mario Thousands of Doors? You can see it right now on the Vine Sauce channel if you're interested. If you want to see the script of this game run through five different languages and coming out as weird, occasionally vaguely sexual nonsense. <laughs> it's weird. But yeah, while he was playing through that, he had some moments of, uh, reflection, where he was just g very genuinely remembering the good times he had with this game. And it really is a classic, it's just, it's just nice to play, it's nice to come back to. Even after all these years. badly need a Paper Mario on the Switch. Any Paper Mario will do, please, Nintendo. You're sitting on a gold mine and letting it, like, fester. On Arlo's video, when he proposed the Remaster Thousand Year Door hashtag, uh, someone proposed... What was it? Uh, Paper Mario Trilogy Refolded, or something like that. Or maybe even just a Paper Mario Trifold. Like, I can imagine that. I can imagine a cute little linking menu that has all the different Paper Mario games laid out on a uh, three-page pamphlet. And, and those specific games, of course, would be Paper Mario on the N64, this Thousand Year Door, and Super Paper Mario. Why not? Thousand Year Door and Super Paper Mario are graphically similar enough to where I think it would make sense to include them in some kind of bundle. A 
Hey, speaking of trilogies, uh... You remember back when everyone was clamoring for, like, Nintendo and maybe Reggie specifically? I don't know why Reggie was brought into this by name, but... People were, were, were like, clamoring for a Mother Trilogy to be re-released in some form. We never got it. And it's a crying shame, because Mother 3 is another great game that I will be live-streaming, uh, about two weeks from now. Like, uh, two Mondays from now, to be exact. So I'm looking forward to that one. If I could, I would have played Thousand Year Door with some kind of difficulty-enhancing mod or hack of some kind. Not gonna get that chance, but... The unofficial English translation for Mother 3 does have a way to access a harder difficulty. So that is something that I'm going to be doing when I play that game later this month. Should be fun. It honestly still isn't all that difficult, even with the increased difficulty. But some of the earlier chapters will test your metal. Kind of like picking an insane mode uh, on what do they what do they call it these days in Fire Emblem? Lunatic difficulty. That's what it is. It's like picking lunatic difficulty in a Fire Emblem game. Eventually, you'll get back up to speed, and you'll have your whole party full of game breakers and what have you. But it is always, always rough starting out. Hey, speaking of which, I need to return to Fire Emblem sometime this year. Fire Emblem Three Houses. Because we got the new uh, Cinder Shadows DLC to, to uh, talk about. And I am thinking of buying the expansion pass just so that I can play through that. I do want to see a little bit of footage from someone playing the game themselves before I go all in on it. Because even for a whole new side story DLC, 25 bucks is kind of a lot to ask. I wish I could just buy the Cindered Shadow stuff by itself and leave out all the extra fluff but I don't think I'm gonna get that opportunity. I kinda liked what we had in Awakening better, where you could pick and choose which DLC to download. Or save a little bit by investing in a bundle. Oops. Right, it's fine, I happen to pick up just the item for this. So that probably challenged my <laughs> strings bit right for a second there. I wonder how that looked. Yeah, I feel kind of bad about uh, this stream series I've been doing with Paper Mario. I, I wanted it to look as good as possible, which is why I went for an enhanced resolution, enhanced texture pack and stuff like that. And ultimately, I ended up overlooking a very crucial thing, and that's my stream's bitrate. I don't know why it slipped my mind. If I could, I'd redo it. Yeah, you know what, someday maybe I will redo it anyway. Because the uh, high-definition texture pack that I downloaded was a work in progress. You yourself may have noticed that not all elements are as good-looking as they could be. And hey, we're almost at level 50. I mean, as long as I got this multi-bounce strategy working. Oops. Assuming I don't screw it up like that. Well, that's not even powerful enough. Well, alrighty then. Why'd I do that? Why'd I do that? Flurry is not protected against fire. Oh, now I feel like a dum dum. Never mind, we're good. <laughs> oh man, Super Guard is one of the best things that they added to this game. I've said it before, I'll say it again. The extra bit of challenge for an opportunity to nullify damage and 
counterattack at the same time. It's just great. It may seem like it would be game-breaking, but it is very difficult to pull off uh, consistently. D despite, <laughs> despite the hooktail battles, like despite the dragon battles I've uh, gotten involved in on this channel, you know, it might look easy, but believe me, it is not. And it's a real shame that that mechanic was never brought back in another, in another uh, RPG game since then. Like, yeah, you kinda have something like that going on with uh, Mario and Luigi games, but it's just, it's not quite the same. There's something fundamentally different between Paper Mario and Mario and Luigi, especially in recent years. Paper Mario feels a bit more tactical, whereas, uh, oh, there it is. Whereas the Mario and Luigi games more and more are leaning towards action above all else, with many games that could take minutes for you to complete. Swab's Wish. I want to get married to Bobo Link, my dear love in a shocker wedding. 22 kids, then we can start a soccer team. Ah! It might never come off? What? Yeah, it will. Uh, oh, okay, that's one way to do it. I <laughs> With a fierce hand. Somehow. Out of a bomb who does not have hands. Alright, so that ought to do it. Now we gotta take the long, snowy road back to Far Outpost. And we'll be done. I wonder what we'll get out of this. Like, at this stage in the game, we don't really need money for anything, so... What could possibly be our reward? Honestly, I would be okay with some duplicate badges. Because it is kind of a pain to go out of your way and find extras of all your badges to make them more effective. Like, I never ever use Power Smash or Power Jump, and I have never tried to stack them together because the default tools you come with, the Spin Jump and the Spring Jump, you know, they're plenty good. They, they take care of most enemies anyway, so why invest the extra badge points? It's not really much of a reason to it. It was- it's one of those ideas that seems interesting on paper, but in the end just isn't worth it. Possibly just bragging rights? Yeah, it- it- it's- uh, it's from the quest board. It has to give us something. Even if it's kind of lame with, uh, it's probably gonna be something like, Oh, here's exactly 64 coins. How cute. Oh hey, incidentally, I think I might have hit the maximum amount of batch points. I could be wrong, but uh, I, I seem to remember 45 being the new maximum after the original Paper Mario stopped you at 30. I got six things to dodge here. One, two, three, yeah, there we go. There's four, there's four. Five, six. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah! Now I gotta do it a second time on my way back. The pipes linking towns together are nice and all, but even so, I wonder if this game might benefit from a fast travel option. Yep, got it. I'll just... I'll just believe that you told me. Are you kidding me? I got a snow bunny out of that? Well, uh... Cheers, I guess. If you use it on the field, it won't freeze you into a popsicle. 
seriously, why why do they have so many items that do things like that? <laughs> I don't get it. There, there was like that heartful kick that you made out of like a peach or something. And it lowers your defense when you eat it. Like, why? I just don't get it. I guess when you have, uh... When you're working with such small numbers as Paper Mario, you don't really have much, uh... room for innovation when it comes to your healing items. Oops. No, I wasn't expecting that. Alright, yeah, whatever. Let's just get out of here. I don't care how much money I'm dropping. I have, like, over 500 or something, right? Yeah, that's more than I could possibly need. Alright, uh, where to next? We got one little side quest in Poshley Heights, and the other one I do not remember. I just happened to- I still have Steam open, uh, focused on a hat in time, and I happened to mouse over one of the achievements that you can unlock. Which very- funnily enough was- it's called Stickin' Star. Very obviously named after Paper Mario Sticker Star. And you get it by collecting 30 freaking stickers in Yakuza Metro, like golly. I did not realize there were that many to collect in Yakuza Metro. I'm gonna be there for... Like, weeks, aren't I? Want to see the great tree, but there's many cads in the way. Won't someone please roust these ne'er-do-wells? And the boggly tree? Sure, let's do it. What could he possibly be talking about? Is it just going to be a bunch of, like, pale piranha plants or something? Who knows? Hey, maybe it'll be the return of uh, Lord Crump. Wouldn't that be funny? He just shows up in one post-game quest to give you a little bit more trouble. That'd be very in-character for him. And hey, technically speaking, uh, the last place that we saw Crump and the x knots was Poshley Heights. Like, they did appear in the credit sequence. They're still out there somewhere. Who knows if we'll bump into him, though. Alright, so did he say he was in the entrance to the Boggly Tree? So, like... in here? Hello? Are you him? Hmm... I think Yakuza Metro introduced the multiplayer party, so it makes sense they added a bunch of stickers for... for chaos. Alright. That's right, I remember now. Hang on a minute, there... There does not appear to be any, uh, toads around here. So, is he, like... ...further outside the tree? Hmm. Oh, hey, speaking of, uh, the online party the multiplayer party for a hat in time. If you, if anyone uh, watching wants to join me one of these days, you know, I, I stream pretty regularly on the weekdays. Uh, if anyone wants to join me <laughs> live on uh, hat in time, I don't see why not. I don't really know how it works. I've seen a lot of anonymous players uh, fiddling about here and there. But I don't know how it works when you're playing with a friend, like, on your Steam friends list. I'd like to find out someday. Alright, where is this guy? Huh. 
I managed to make it one of those days, sure. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be... Oh. <laughs> you know what? Now that I'm out of the pit of 100 trials, I should just equip the bump attack badge. Are you kidding me? Well, I would attack, but poor Yoshi here just doesn't fare that well against multiple uh, airborne enemies. Okay, uh, take that off, slap on, bump attack, bumper cars. All right, there we go, be gone! All of you. All right, this will make it easier to track down this guy wherever the heck he is. There you are! What? Was that you could say? You could help me? Excellent, just marvelous. I was about to give up. Came to the woods to see the great tree, but the things up ahead scared me. Contending with goons is not part of my repertoire, so I've stalled here. Uh... Give him a proper thrashing! <laughs> to this day, the original... <laughs> provider of that quote that I'm aware of is uh, Princess Elincia from Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Not already, eh? Well, heck yeah. What'd he say? He gave me what he was gonna spend on lunch? Well, uh, that was easy. Oh, that's weird. That's real weird. I got the coins while I was riding on Yoshi. But, uh, apparently the, like, drop-down menu is not allowed to spawn while you're riding Yoshi. So I didn't actually receive the coins until I jumped back off. That was really weird. As you watch us foolishly continue to repeat history, what could you think of us? You can do nothing but stand and watch our ignorance. No, what rot! To assume that a tree can do nothing. That only proves my own foolishness! Gee, calm down there, Walter Jr. I probably got the name wrong. I was trying to remember the name of a poet back from, like, English class. No, Walter was that guy from Game of Thrones. Uh, was it Walden? Wald something or another. There's, like, a lake in Tennessee named after him. I remember one day I was actually tasked, uh, me and the whole class were tasked with going on a field trip there and writing poetry whilst, uh, exploring the environment. And wouldn't you know, it was raining cats and dogs that day. So in a way, that was kind of uh, an effective way to be presented with this, uh, you know, uh, landmark. It's just in this never-ending downpour of despair that clouds our vision and muddies our pages. I was feeling pretty gloomy and uh, full of despair, so I wrote some pretty good stuff on that field trip. All right, bub, what could this be all about? Are we gonna bake a cake? To give to your mum? Who knows? As long as we don't have to go back to Far Outpost. I don't know why, I just really don't like that road. I would much prefer not to go back anytime soon. Alright, it's just about noon where I am here, and probably as soon as I'm done... This isn't the... <laughs> this isn't the richest city in the world. Hang on a minute. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to go to bed right after I'm done streaming for the day, because I will have to get up and work tonight. But that's alright, we seem to have finally, thank god, finally entered the slow season. And Thursday nights are... 
Hi! What are you doing here? Goombella, you recognize these two? That's Bo! Wait a second, Mario! Exactly what is your relationship with her? Tell me now! <laughs> Just kidding. I always wanted to say that. But you did go on an adventure with her, right? Tell me sometime, okay? Actually, I don't think uh, you in the chat, I don't think you recognize these characters, but they're from the first Paper Mario. That's Butler. He's Bo's butler, but what does a butler do exactly? Looks like he only listens to Bo, so I guess he wouldn't answer me if I asked. Lady Bro, your beauty is like the song of a nightingale in the evening. Speaking of poetry. Indeed, I feel you've grown into a fine young girl who'd make your ancestors proud. It is you, isn't it, Mario? Well, it has been quite a while, hasn't it? I've come here with Bootler. He has a little vacation to Poshley Sanctum. And it's the perfect place for a upper crust like you. I hadn't left the mansion in ages. I figured it was time to turn some heads on the road. <laughs> but what a nice surprise to see you. Feel free to be overwhelmed by my beauty. Is there is there anyone that like reacts to her in any special way? Yeah, not really. Well, maybe Flurry, because Flurry's the other like diva character that we have with us. Nope. <laughs> what the fuck is that laugh? It's supposed to be like a Ojo laugh, or shoot, how do you say that? You know, the the like Japanese noble woman's laugh. Except no, less oh ho ho and more like. It's supposed to be, like, ghostly. You know, wee hee ha ha, or whatever. Alright, what do you want? Wrote a letter, want to give her a present, but I don't know what to get. I've narrowed it down to three things, so could you help me decide? Uh, mango, mask, or shroom cake? How about cake? You also have to find it and bring it here. Oh. Well, that shouldn't be a problem. I probably still have cake mix left over in uh, storage. Ojo Sama left. Yeah, something like that. Because that absolutely is her personality. I don't know where exactly she gets it from. Like, does nobility count when you're undead? It probably does. One of the most important characters in the lore of uh, Warcraft, for instance, is the Banshee Queen. So, yeah, it probably matters a little bit whether you died as a highborn, high, highborn noble, highborn noble or not. I still have the uh, Steam achievements for A Hat in Time up here. Apparently one that I never got in Mafia Town was a series of unfortunate accidents. I never thought to go and bother the Mafia enough to, like, knock them all off their benches or whatever, but I guess I could do that someday if I'm feeling bored. Alright, so, secret for Shroom Cake is to get a mushroom followed by a cake. Huh? Oh shoot, I, I cleaned out the storage last time I played this game. Whoops. There are many kings and queens of the undead in the fictional world. Absolutely, but... Uh, th there is a difference between dying as nobility and, like, becoming the king of the ghosts or whatever. You know, like Captain Kita from uh, Majora's Mask. Well, then again, there's a bit of overlap there, isn't there? Well, I don't know. Maybe a better example would have been, like, uh... One of the Greek gods of the Underworld. You know, just because they're Lord of the Underworld doesn't mean that they, like, died and went there as a Lord. Uh, I'm just getting into, like, weird nitpicky semantics at this point. Alright, give me some cake. What else have I gotten here? Narcos of Metro, Arctic Cruise, Death Wish. 
collect all the time pieces. That's probably gonna be the last one I do. Collect three time pieces in co-op. Oh, well. I guess I have to play co-op in order to uh, get all the achievements, huh? One punch. Defeat any boss with the one-hit hero badge equipped. Ha! I see what they did there. Didn't I beat the Snatcher without losing any health? Well, maybe not, but... I feel like I could beat him with the uh, one-hit hero badge. It'd be worth trying someday. Alright, after I deliver this present, it will be almost time to say goodbye to Paper Mario once and for uh, a while. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll be back playing another Paper Mario game someday, but this will be, this day will be the last day I play Thousand Year Door on stream. Until something compels me to do it again. I don't know. Maybe someday uh, we'll have really advanced GameCube hacking tools. Yep, there you go. Alright, I hope she's not on vacation in the tropics or something silly like that. The Snatcher has pretty low health, but being unable to use hats is something to keep in mind. Honestly, I didn't mind it all that much, although now that you mention it, it might be easier to do another boss with the Time Stop hat. Uh, equipped. There you go. Happy birthday. Dear lovely mama, I'm sorry I didn't do my homework. From now on, I'll do my homework and try to be a good ba -bum like papa. And I will give you good food and a nice house. And a pretty hat. So please don't hate me from bub. Oh, I'm just going to break down and cry here. Oh, um... Oh, how delightful. Oh, no. Well, I'd say that went well. Don't mind my tears. They are joyful ones. I just want you to tell Bub something for me. Tell him I'm not angry. I was just being stern because I love him and care about his future. I never meant to hurt his little feelings by it. I'm sorry I lost sight of that. Gonzalez, free. please bring my little Bub back to me now. Well, that was, uh, hmm. I can't say I'm feeling too involved in the story of this upper crust Babom family, but, uh. Okay. Okay! <laughs> That's what gets me. Oh! We do that little errand for the little kid, and we get his, like, lunch money. It's all he has. Uh, that is just too precious. Alright. Time for our final rendezvous with Luigi. I hope he doesn't have a sad story for us, too. On one side, he's a kid. On the other side, he's from a rich family. Okay. When you bring that into the equation, we tread some dangerous territory. If anyone, if any of you have ever seen uh, JoJo Part 4, uh, there's a weird, like, elementary schooler or middle schooler or something. He's got, like, weird... He's got a weird spiky Dodoria head. I think his name's Shigechi. And I, I think I've already talked about this character on stream before. Uh, he ends up striking a deal with uh, Josuke to, uh, like scam a whole bunch of money and ends up turning really greedy as a result of the influence of that money. So, yeah, if that's what was happening with a uh, little bub there where he has access to all this ludicrous amount of money that he doesn't even know what to do with, but he decides that we're not worth it and he just gives us a couple of coins. That puts it in an entirely new light that I wish I had not considered. All right, Luigi, where are you at? Tell me a story, bro. So tell me about this book deal you signed. 
Actually, you know what? This guy actually novelized my quest. He's been interviewing me. He was actually interviewing me here at the, uh, the inn during breaks from my adventure. I didn't think anyone would be interested in reading a book about Luigi. But Super Luigi came out recently, and check this out, bro. Here in Roadport, it set a new record for consecutive weeks at number one on the bestseller list. Oh, ho, ho, ho. hooray for Luigi, bro. I started reading it the other day, but it's an encyclopedic account in multiple volumes. Excruciating detail, bro. It's like a history book. It seemed like one, anyway. They've got it in the shop here in Rogueport. How about you snag a copy, bro? Wait, is that it? I wonder if he'll have anything new to say after I read the final chapter. Alright, here we go. The journey's end. At long last, Luigi crossed the threshold of Hate Song Tower. Luigi rallied his allies. We will defeat the Chestnut King! We must! Friends by his side, Luigi at last faced the fell Chestnut King. But then he heard a voice, and spun to see the fair Princess Eclair. She told our hero the painful truth. The evil Chestnut King was actually her true love, made monstrous by crepe in a bid for the throne. Hang on a minute. Luigi didn't mention this. At that moment, the villainous crepe appeared. The marvelous compass, please. Hand it over, and the Loof Empire will rule again. <laughs> Luigi and co. were no match for the might of crepe, their true enemy. But then the compass piece in Eclair's tiara shone forth. It bestowed the future sight on Luigi. Knowing crepe's every move, he smote the fiend with his mallet. And with that, it was finally over. That's some last-minute <laughs> plot bullshit that you would expect out of Jojo. Luigi and his friends parted, leaving the Waffle Kingdom in peace. But Luigi regretted not gazing farther into the future. He longed to see the Wafflers gathering on Princess Eclair's wedding day. He wanted to see her beauty, and who stood at her side. But it was not to be. Luigi went back to his humble home, which remained exactly as he had left it. A cold comfort for his heavy heart. Picking up a book he had been reading, Luigi tried to read, but his long trial had sapped his strength and he soon fell asleep. Hey, funny thing, that's exactly how Luigi's Mansion 3 opens. Luigi dreamt of his friends and his beloved Princess Eclair, and sleeping, Luigi spoke, I shall return! Hmm. That would have been an inter interesting little uh, sequel hook. Uh, so yeah, bro, what was that about Minister Crepe turning it evil? Did he ever mention that? Let's see... The most terrifying beast, Chestnut King himself. Jumped into the king's fangs, gave him a hammer whack. Uh... huh. That story ended a little bit abruptly. Oh, he doesn't want to admit to us that Princess Eclair was engaged already. Oh, that's what's going on. I see how it is, Luigi. <laughs> He's probably, like, in denial himself. He went through all that trouble hoping that, to have a little, you know, a little get-together with the princess, but, uh, hmm. Poor Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a, that's a pretty good reason to buy the books. You find out on the hidden plot detail that he never mentioned. So, uh... Oh, jeez, is that it? Is that really the end? I think it is. I can't think of anything else to do. It's not really a point in grinding levels. Not really a point in getting multiple badges. Well, we had a good run, but it's time to move on. Our next RPG, of course, will be Mother 3, coming soon. I'm looking forward to it, I hope you guys are too. And, uh, I guess with that... Huh, I don't have my end screen. Um... Oh, it's fine, we'll just wait here until Mario falls asleep. Or better yet, I could end the stream the instant that the game blacks out after Mario goes to bed. 
I like how like 30% of the whole stream series, but it was fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it. This is an excellent game. Heavily recommended if you ever get your hands on a copy. Alright, that's all for now. Nighty night. I myself am also going to be going to bed, so I'll feed this in goodbye, and I'll catch you guys next week. Have a good one. Wow. Oh.